Hello you guys, my name is Maggie and I am from the Weller Center at Lehigh Valley Hospital. Some of you may recognize me from when I came to your schools and taught you lessons face to face. Some of you may not and that is perfectly okay. What the Weller Center does is we travel to a bunch of different schools and we teach different health programs. I teach a lot of different things. I teach things like depression, I teach stress, puberty, that's always a really fun one. But for you guys today we are going to be talking about drugs, specifically marijuana. Now this is a word many of you have probably heard before. There are a lot of nicknames for it. It's things like kush, weed, pots, you may have heard of some of those. We're going to talk about it today. Now years ago when we talked about marijuana, we said marijuana was completely illegal in all of the United States. That's not the case anymore. Things have really been changing around marijuana, specifically the laws. Now we're gonna talk about them today. We're gonna to talk about what marijuana is used for, why it can be dangerous, and what are the laws surrounding it because they're a little different here in Pennsylvania. Things get really, really complicated when it comes to marijuana and things are changing every single day. There are new laws being passed in some states where marijuana is completely legal and in some states it's still completely illegal. So we're gonna talk about some of those states and what makes it legal in those states. All right, so let's get started. All right, you guys, so let's get started talking about marijuana. So first I wanna start off by discussing what is marijuana. Let's give it a good definition. Now a lot of you guys may have heard this word before, but you may not be 100% sure what marijuana is. Let's talk about it. Let's give it a good definition. So marijuana is a plant, it comes from the marijuana plant. It's, you can see a picture of it on the right, you can see all those leaves. So the marijuana plant grows from the ground People will then harvest it and they'll let it dry out. They'll let it get really, really dry and it'll kind of current, turn into these like little crumbles. It'll greenish brown and they ball it up really, really tight until it's all crumbled. And then people will use it in different ways. So people use the dried form of it. They don't just use it from the leaves. Now the marijuana plant contains a lot of different chemicals. And these chemicals act on your brain and can change your mood or kind of your state of consciousness. That's what makes marijuana a drug, because it changes the way your brain thinks for a temporary amount of time. That is why people use marijuana, because it sort of changes the way it makes them feel. All right, so there are a couple of key ingredients that make up marijuana. So I told you marijuana, it comes from the marijuana plant, it grows from the ground. And within that marijuana plant, there are a couple of chemicals that are gonna do different things to your body. So one of those chemicals is called THC. THC is the psychoactive ingredient of marijuana. That basically means that's the ingredient that's gonna make you feel high. It's gonna give you that high feeling. The other ingredient in marijuana is something called CBD. That's the part of marijuana that will make you feel relaxed or calm or even a little bit sleepy. So in states where marijuana is legal, people will actually extract that THC or that CBD and isolate it. So a lot of people will typically vape these or they'll smoke it in these different forms. So they'll smoke just THC or they'll vape just CBD. And they use those different things for whatever their uses are. Specifically for CBD, people will use CBD to help them go to sleep or to kind of calm down anxiety because it gives you that relaxed or calm feeling. So marijuana has a lot of different names. So I'm sure you guys probably recognize a couple of these on here. So you may hear these names in school, from friends, online, in music, TV, there's a lot of them. So marijuana has a lot of different nicknames. These include things like pot, weed, kush, ganja, cannabis, and those are all just different names for marijuana. And believe me, there are dozens and dozens more. Some names you guys probably know that maybe even I haven't heard of. Now, how do people use marijuana? So like I said, marijuana is usually dried out till it turns into those kind of crumbly forms. And people will use it in a bunch of different ways. So one really, really common way people use it is they sort of roll it up and smoke it like a cigarette. So they'll take those special papers that you buy from tobacco shops, they'll put the marijuana in there, they roll it up and then they smoke it. Some people will put it into like a pipe or other different devices that they use to smoke it. Some people will actually put it into vapes. So if in states where marijuana is legal, you can buy marijuana vapes from the store. So like those little cartridges you use for things like Juul, they have versions of that with marijuana and then you vape it. Some people even brew it as tea. So they'll put it in hot water, let it brew, and they'll drink the water. 
Uh, a lot of companies and different people, what they actually do is they'll collect the oil from it. So they'll cook all that marijuana up, they'll get it really, really hot, and they'll collect oil. And that's really, really concentrated. And this is called dabbing. So what a lot of people do is they collect that oil, which is a highly concentrated form of marijuana, and then they'll proceed to smoke it. And this can be really dangerous because that's a really high amount of marijuana. It's a really high concentration. Some people will even put it into foods. So they'll bake it into things like cookies, brownies, gummy bears, which is honestly a precaution. So if you see food laying around at home or somebody, one of your friends is trying to give it to you, just make sure you always are double checking because this happens a lot. Some kids will see a cookie or a brownie or a gummy bear laying around. They think it's normal food and then they eat it and it turns out to contain marijuana. So that's really common. And again, that one can also be very dangerous because some people put very large amounts in those food items and it's really easy to take too much. Now, what are the effects of marijuana? So what happens to you when you use marijuana? No matter what form you're using it, whether you're smoking it, you're eating it, you're putting it in tea, it's gonna cause some form of change in your body, specifically in your brain. So the short-term effects, so this is, means that's what's gonna happen to you after you use it immediately. You're gonna have altered senses. You may feel a little bit different, you may be thinking differently, and you're gonna have changes in mood. You may be really happy, a little bit more calm. You might have problems with body movement. So you may feel kind of sluggish. You feel really slowed down. You feel like your body weighs a ton. Some people have trouble thinking, so they can't really remember things as well as they did before. And a lot of people get an increased appetite, so they start to eat a bunch more than they did before. Now, long-term effects. So this means if you're smoking marijuana or you're using it, every single day for long periods of time, that can cause some serious damage on your body, especially if you're using it really young. Now, a lot of you guys, you guys are under 16. Some of you are under 18. Now, when you're using marijuana during this time, your brain is still developing. And that's a really important time in your life. Your brain is developing up until you turn 25. And during this time, your brain is growing. It's getting better and better every single day. And when you use different drugs, especially things like marijuana, that can cause some changes in that brain development. So long-term, teenagers can have problems with brain development. That means trouble thinking, you have trouble memorizing things, and just honestly trouble learning. Some people who smoke every single day, they end up coughing a lot, and some people have breathing problems. And finally, some people who become pregnant and smoke marijuana can have problems with child development. So that's all, those are all really big issues that can happen long term. Now, a lot of people ask, is it possible to overdose on marijuana? And the answer to that question is yes, absolutely you can overdose on marijuana, just like on any other drug. Now, very few people die from an overdose, but you do get really, really sick and a lot of people have to go to the hospital. Now, it is possible to overdose, especially if you take a really high amount. So do you remember when I was talking about dabbing, that concentrated oil, or when people eat it? Well, these are situations where people often end up taking way too much because they're taking really high amounts, and that can cause an overdose. So symptoms of an overdose include anxiety, panic, and a rapid heart rate. So when your heart is like beating out of your chest, you're panicking, some people even have hallucinations and paranoia. Now, if you think anybody is ever having those symptoms, make sure you call 911 right away or tell another adult. It's really important that that person gets medical attention because they may be having a marijuana overdose. Now, is marijuana legal? Well, if you guys would have asked me this question about 30 years ago, the question would have been absolutely not. Marijuana is illegal in all of the United States. That is not the case anymore. Lately, things have been changing. For the past couple of years, the laws around marijuana are changing in every single state. So in some states, marijuana is actually completely legal. That means it's legal to use it medically, and it's legal recreationally. So you, that means recreationally means you don't need a reason to buy it. You can just go to a dispensary and buy as much as you want. And the age to use it in those states is 21. So these include states like California, that's a really, really big one, and Colorado. So those are states where marijuana is legal medically and recreationally. Now in Pennsylvania, it is still illegal to use recreationally. The only way in Pennsylvania you can use marijuana completely legally is to get it through a prescription. So only medical marijuana is actually legal in Pennsylvania. 
So in California, even though you're allowed to use it recreationally, that is not the case in Pennsylvania. You can still get arrested and you can still go to jail if you're caught using marijuana in illegal form. So if you got it without a prescription and people go to jail every single day for using this. So let's talk about how to get medical marijuana in Pennsylvania. What are the steps? Well, medical marijuana is still from the marijuana plant, but the marijuana plant does have some chemicals that are proven to help with certain health problems. So thing like, things like seizures, with pain management, cancer. So it has been proven to be useful in those situations. And more states are making it legal to use it as medicine for those certain conditions. But even though there are studies proving it does help, the FDA, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, has not approved medical marijuana as a medicine. So this is where it gets really, really complicated. Now, in states like California and Colorado, it is legal to use, and even in Pennsylvania, you can use it medically from a prescription. But still, at the national level, it is still illegal. So this is where it gets really, really complicated. All right, so I bet you guys are wondering, well, in Pennsylvania, how do you actually get medical marijuana? How do you actually get that prescription? Let's go through those steps. Now, the first step is you actually have to see a doctor who can prescribe marijuana. Now, not all doctors can do this. There are very specific doctors. There's a whole list of them that you can find online on the Pennsylvania State website, and there's only a couple. So it is a little bit complicated because you have to find that specific doctor and manage to get an appointment with them. Now, that doctor is only going to prescribe it to you if this patient or you has certain medical conditions. So those things that I mentioned before, people who have seizures, people who have anxiety, people who have certain cancers. Again, there's a whole list online that will show all those medical conditions that qualify getting me medical marijuana. Now, if your doctor says, OK, you have these conditions, I'm going to approve you and write you a prescription for marijuana you have to go online and register for a medical marijuana card. It's very similar to getting your license. It's basically a license saying, hey, I have a prescription for marijuana. It's okay for me to use it. Once you receive your card, you may then purchase certain amounts from approved dispensaries. So there are some dispensaries all around Pennsylvania, and you can only go to those dispensaries and buy medical marijuana if you have that prescription card. So those are all the steps you have to go through. And guys, it's not really an easy process. It's not like you can just walk into a store and buy it. There's a lot of kind of hoops you have to jump through. And guess what? All of these steps cost money. This takes a really long time and it costs a lot. That's why a lot of people don't really go for medical marijuana in Pennsylvania because it can get so expensive and it honestly does just take a lot of time. So that is how you get medical marijuana in Pennsylvania. So for anybody who followed those steps, that's okay for them. It's completely legal. But if you didn't follow those steps, you don't have a medical marijuana card and you're caught using it, you can get into a lot of trouble. So finally, I just want to show you guys what a medical marijuana license looks like. It actually looks very similar to a driver's license. So if any of you are over 16 and you have your license, you may think this looks a little bit familiar. So why don't you guys go home and ask your parents to see their own driver's license. This will kind of give you an idea of what a medical marijuana license may look like. So it's going to have the person's picture, it'll have their name, and it'll have an expiration date. So when your card expires, you have to go and get it renewed just like you would with any other license. And this card essentially gives you permission to use medical marijuana. And again, if you don't have this card and you're caught using it, you can get into a lot of trouble. So you guys need to think long term. If any of you plan on having a job one day or you plan on going to college and you have this criminal record of using marijuana, that can really jeopardize your chances. So it's not worth gambling with your future for something that is still illegal in this state. All right, you guys, so I hope you learned a lot from this presentation. I know that marijuana is a pretty complicated subject, so there was plenty to talk about. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.